Hey guys, it's Trafflington. You know, I couldn't sleep tonight, but YouTube woke me up and told me it is time for me to get paid because I haven't released a video in who knows how long. Today I want to talk about a little bit about the history of Windows, and I know that there's been a lot of buzz about the alleged next version of Windows, especially that mythical Windows 12. Moreover, Microsoft's trust is at an all-time low. They're getting overrun by protesters, they're hyping up the next steps of AI, they're going through a little bit of a breakup with OpenAI. So rather than make claims that Microsoft could attempt to destroy Linux again or that the next version of Windows is imminent, let's examine what the next proverbial Windows 12 could look like. Because Windows 12 wouldn't be a conversation if we didn't mention that the inciting videos that are uploaded to the Windows YouTube channel and the Windows IT Pro YouTube channel, which everyone clearly watches. The first video was a video with David Weston, one of Microsoft's security VPs. He's actually been at Microsoft for a number of years now. Also known as Dwizzle on the streets. A real Dwizzle, isn't he? <laughs> the inciting video included Dwizzle and opened up with Dwizzle saying something incredibly absurd. The world of sort of mousing around and keyboarding around and typing will feel as alien as it does to Gen Z to sort of use DOS. Now, before we analyze this, I don't think Microsoft put a lot of thought into this video. Every summer, Microsoft uploads cringy videos across all of their YouTube channels with very little thought or substance. In fact, if you look at the name that's on the clapper board at the beginning of the video, that's a freelance photographer who works out of Washington because Microsoft laid off all their videographers and they needed to save themselves a quick buck for next quarter. Furthermore, it's clear whoever edited this video skipped over a ton of points that Dwizzle and other admins would be very interested in. Things like improving application security, quantum cryptography resistance, memory safety. Unfortunately, you don't get to hear anything about that. Because as soon as he mentions it very briefly, the camera instantly cuts away and we don't get to hear any more because apparently we don't have enough time. And later in August, the Windows head recently promoted to be president of Windows and Devices, Pavan Davalori, also reiterated much of what Twizzle said, albeit in a much less appealing and less exaggerated way in an August podcast. Now, when a lot of people will go to listen to this podcast, I am willing to bet that 90% of people checked out in the first 10 minutes because Pavan was asked by Christian incredibly meaningless questions about his life and his hobbies and the books he's reading and stuff that nobody gives a crap about. The thing that's most interesting is Pavan stands the best chance at unifying the fragmentation of Windows teams. But unfortunately, he still can't get over the humiliation of introducing Stevie Batiche by Panos Panay at Build two years ago. Sorry, that was Stevie. <laughs> he said the wrong name! I'm not Panos. <laughs> So when we talk about Windows 12, I think it's really important that we judge it on its own merits, but we also try to remember what came in the past and that we're not going to judge Windows 12 based on some speculative videos that were released on Microsoft's YouTube channel that were very poorly produced. Instead, I want to take a look at the trajectory of Microsoft as a company because many people are quick to remember the prominence of Windows, especially in the late 90s, but a lot has changed since then. So let's rewind time and go back to Microsoft Build 2014. Many reviewers were anticipating enhancements to the Windows 8 touchscreen focus. The promise of the new Project Threshold, or as it's supposed to have been known, Windows 9. For many reasons, there the branding conflict of the original Windows 9, some potential compatibility problems, and the critical reception of Windows 8, I think Microsoft was in the right to make the leap to Windows 10 and skipping over 9 entirely. To find, discover, and run your Windows applications with the new start menu. Of course, Windows 10 wasn't without its wrinkles either. The after effects of Windows Phone lingered and despite the hopes of Microsoft's faithful, the Windows Phone just could not compete against Android and the iPhone. How about in Kelvin? I converted that temperature to Celsius. No, that's not what I want. 
privacy in Windows also hit a new all-time low, with in addition to more ads being shoved down your throat, they got to violate the privacy of the European regulation bodies. But it also meant that Windows under its new leadership with Terry Meyerson went from being the center of the company to being one of the most neglected portions of Microsoft. Because what Microsoft chose to do was to pursue greener pastures at the ever elusive computer in the cloud. So if the cloud struggling into the 2020 pandemic, imagine the world surprise that a new event that lagged out so hard that apparently nobody except CNET could watch it came out introducing the new big leap with Windows 11. We took aim at complexity. Oh. And complexity aimed back, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're buffering. Get a little too complex. <laughs> Throughout this demo, it became very apparent that someone at Microsoft burned with Apple Envy, a new interface that moved the taskbar to the center, the promise of familiarity with things looking a little different, new UI elements that hide together or barely cobbled together pieces of Windows Vista and XP if you look deep enough, but most of all, a greater focus on security and stricter hardware requirements with TPM-based security and the requirement of modern processors. One aspect that Microsoft has changed that has absolutely nothing to do with the technical merits of Windows is vision casting. Windows 10 had a big burden to fill to combat the negative feedback of Windows 8 across the board. At the same time, Windows 10 also needed to focus more on the business experience, the different use cases of Windows, and whether that was in the cloud, on the laptop, a touchscreen, an embedded device, a kiosk, or the credit card machine that crashed yesterday. <laughs> That's why Windows has put a big focus on decoupling apps from the base operating system and putting a deeper focus on Microsoft products like integrating OneDrive and Office more deeply so they can crapify them in the future. Windows 12, on the other hand, has to overcome a different problem. Opposition to Windows 11 and the enterprise could not be more apparent. From anecdotal experience, I work for a relatively small sized company in the United States of a little under 100 employees. But moving to Windows 11 took roughly around two years, despite having compatible hardware. At scale, it's clear that the market share of Windows is only going to win by obsoleting computers that are already in the wild, as well as being default on newly purchased PCs. Dell and Lenovo are making bank on those upgrades, and they thank Microsoft every week. But there's also the tarnished consumer brand of the Copilot Plus PC. Now, this is a bit of a mouthful, and I know that a lot of power users will quake at the idea of a ARM-based computer featuring recall capabilities and potential privacy concerns. And while I sympathize with that, I believe the reality is Windows has made more invasive changes throughout Windows 10 and Windows 8 that are more threatening than what recall has done. If you weren't concerned with Windows 8 and Windows 10, why are you concerned about recall? And it's also arbitrarily restricted to systems featuring integrated neural processing unit or the NPU, which is going to get hammered every time your computer takes a screenshot and eats up all your memory. And it's created a world of have or have nots within Windows. And it almost seems like Windows isn't really focusing on anything other than the ARM machines right now. But I want to make the argument that this might be the kick that Microsoft's users will need. So just hear me out here. Going back to vision casting, Satya Nadella is a very ambitious guy. He's made Microsoft a trillion dollar company when the former company bet everything on the home computer. Microsoft has made his lion's share in the cloud, beating out pretty much every single cloud provider there is except for AWS and market share. And it's all thanks to Satya Nadella. They've profited from the promise of artificial intelligence and investing deep into tech and into OpenAI, the biggest household name of AI chatbots. They've effectively manipulated politics into their favor while avoiding the ire of the current US administration. Well, for the most part anyway. What about Microsoft? That's a big number. Here we are close to in the United States uh, around 75 to 80 billion dollars. The thing that Microsoft is missing is a use case for AI, but also hardware that's capable of it. 
For years, the chipmaker Intel has held a stranglehold over PC makers and has tried and failed repeatedly to innovate in the era of mobile devices. More than just Intel, Microsoft has used the requirements of Copilot Plus PCs to force vendors to make better computers and not charge less than $1,000 for crappy computers that no one should be buying. This is where the requirements for MPUs and the ARM architecture come in. They attempt to solve issues of battery life and give Microsoft a use case for AI and justify the hundreds of millions of dollars that Microsoft is investing in it. Beyond vision, I think it's also about accessibility. While Windows hasn't been the worst platform for accessibility, the advent of AI has brought the prospect of a new form of computing that could be greatly enhanced by AI or the Copilot Plus PC. Something that's missing from alternative operating systems is native dictation or the integration of AI into the desktop workflow because AI will open new ways to use your computer. All of this vision casting, the promise of the Copilot Plus PC and Windows on ARM and accessibility and AI is a long way of saying that Windows 12 Windows 20, 30, or whatever it's going to be called is completely irrelevant to you as an end user. The major reason is a key detail that I've been avoiding the whole time. When the Copilot Plus PC was brought out to major Microsoft coverage, the intent was to be Windows 12. But because of the recalls debacle, because of the disaster of Intel not being able to move fast enough, that didn't happen. We've been told from our financial analysts and from people who watch the economy that the AI bubble is going to burst any day now, but that hasn't happened yet. And seeing how well Windows 11 adoption is going, it's likely going to be years, minimum five years or more before Microsoft gets a chance to do something like release a new named version of Windows again with fancy synth music and computer generated backgrounds. It's going to be a very long time before Windows 12 is relevant to all of us. But there is one thing that continues to get worse, and that's Windows itself. While I believe Windows raising the bar of their PC requirements is commendable, everything else about Windows is so poorly executed or littered with ads and continues to get in crapified every single day. And maybe the end of Windows 12 is your kick in the pants to move on, buy that shiny new MacBook, or finally switch over to using Linux. But it doesn't matter what you do, because Microsoft doesn't care about you. They already ignore your feedback about Windows 11, so they don't care if you're going to leave. Speaking about leaving, before you leave, why don't you go leave a like on this video? Leave a like on this video if you'd like to hear me complain and moan about Microsoft and the general state of desktop computing. Fun fact, did you know that during the Activision Blizzard case here in the United States, the judge admitted that her son works for Microsoft and it was totally not swayed by that or had any conflict of interest in any way whatsoever. Oh, by the way, Activision Blizzard is now owned by Microsoft. And if you'd like to hear more from me, you can always visit my website, Trafalton.com. If you visit my website, you get access to a full transcript of everything I've said in this video, as well as links to some of the sources and videos that you've seen in this video. And if you like to support the work that I do, you can give me money on Patreon and YouTube. If it wasn't for the people on Patreon and YouTube, I would probably have to litter my website with ads and do VPN sponsorships and probably annoy the bejesus out of you. But thankfully, I don't have to do that. So I'd like to thank all of you for watching and hope you got to enjoy learning a little bit about the history of Windows.